everybody. Welcome to my sunroom. Welcome to episode 11 of All About African Violets. All About African Violets is musically sponsored by Ted Yoder. You can hear and purchase his wonderful music on his website, www.tedyoder.com. He has a new CD that is going to be coming out very, very soon. Um, I believe it's called Chocolate Skies. So definitely go and, and check that out. You can also, um, you can buy CDs on his website, but you can also just download an MP3 from there. You can also download his music on iTunes. So welcome. I, I'm getting my glasses on immediately because I have lots of things to read to you today. Um, you know, I told you that I was going to check in with my friend Joyce Stork about, um, about the manure question the alpaca poop question that we had last week from Sapphire Yin. So here is what Joyce had to say. And uh, as usual, I learn something anytime I ask Joyce a question. Joyce says, having just watched the podcast, I think her question, meaning Sapphire Yin's, Yin's question, is really about this particular alpaca mi manure mix. Fresh manure, still wet and icky, is way too hot meaning that it contains too much nitrogen to be used as fertilizer. The nitrogen is in an ammonia state at that time, and if you think about it, ammonia is a gas which evaporates and stinks if it is left open, left in open air. The longer it is left in open air, the less ammonia that is left in the manure, which is what happens during composting. Many sites suggest at least one year of composting before using manure as fertilizer. Composted manure can be quite safe and not stinky or icky to use inside, often as a tea and, and outside, providing that the company producing it has rigid standards and monitors the chemistry closely. See, I knew there had to be math and or chemistry in this, and Joyce is taking a chemistry class right now. So she was the right person to ask about this. Um, she says, with her particular alpaca manure from a company offering it for the first time, the nitrogen content might be unpredictable. I would proceed carefully before using it on any indoor potted plants. It is likely to be safe to use in the garden outside where nature has all sorts of controls to break down the manure. For example, Earth contains lots of active soil bacteria, which breaks down the nitrogen into a usable form for the plants to absorb. With plants grown inside in soilless potting mixes, that's what we use to grow African violets, um, there is less of this active bacteria and you can quickly have problems and burnt foliage. She might want to experiment with the alpaca manure mix on a violet, but I would strongly recommend that she try it on only one plant. It should be a violet that she wouldn't be afraid to lose, just in case the fertilizer is still too hot. Also, composted manure contains all of the nutrients that plants need, but it mainly supplies nitrogen, a balanced fertilizer, designed to provide all the nutrients in proper ratios is a far better choice, especially for serious growers. So Sapphire Yin, I hope that gives you some more info on the alpaca poop question. Um, like I said, I always learn something anytime I, I hear from Joyce or ask her a question. I have tea today in my sunroom, in my knitting goddess mug, so I thought I would have some just then. You know, I got another question from my friend John Reagan. He is, um, he is a commercial grower. He is, a, I believe, a student judge. He is also a florist up in the uh, northern suburbs of Chicago in Crystal Lake. His, his, uh, his uh, florist is called A Twisted Stem. I've seen lots of the photos of a lot of the work that he does. It's beautiful. So he had a question, and he says, I enjoy watching your video blog. And must confess, I've missed a few, so forgive me if this has already been addressed. You mention often that you enjoy growing for show, as do I. But I'm interested in knowing what selection criteria you use to select varietals to grow. The plant's show record, past experience, certain leaf or bloom types, or the name itself. 
This is a great question because not everybody does grow for show, but for those of us who do, there are a variety of ways to select a plant, John. I think I use pretty much all of the methods that you mentioned, but a great place to start is in the African Violet Magazine. Every year, Floyd Lawson, who is um, from Southern California, he lives in Torrance, he puts together the AVSA's best variety list every year. And this is compiled, well, I'll read, I've got the edition, um, the 2011 list appeared in the November-December edition of uh, 2011 of the magazine. And here's what Floyd says. He says, welcome to the AVSA's 2011 best variety list. Thank you to all who participated by regular mail and email. The response was good this year and again spanned the world. Now, what happens is every year, Floyd puts out the call and asks everyone who reads the magazine um, to send in their favorite varieties. And then he takes that information and compiles it and comes up with the best variety list for that year, the most popular plants. <clears throat> he, he usually does the top 25. And he says, again, this year, we list each of the top 25 favorites with their descriptions from AVSA's first class computer database. Uh, many have asked about, well, we won't go through there asking about species, but we're, we're talking right now just about favorites. And many plants, uh, for example, the plant that is first on the list is Irish Flirt. This is not a new plant for 2011. This plant uh, hit the decks in 1991. So there are some very tried and true varieties um, to take a look at. And the fact that they remain popular tells me as a grower that the plant grows well, it grows, it blooms and grows true to its description, and that it has been very, usually very successful in shows across the country, across the world, really, anymore. So um, some of, I, I won't read them all to you, but Irish Flirt was on to, for 2011. Blue Dragon uh, from, from 2005 was on this year. Uh, Smooch Me, one of Kent Stork's plants, which came out, which was hybridized, came out in um, 1998, is on this list. So you can see that some, here's one from 1974, Pixie Blue, which is a miniature trailer. Some plants just kind of grow themselves. They have a great reputation and you can read their description and think, wow, that sounds kind of interesting. I might like to grow that. Or you might see it at show and think, wow, well, that looks pretty good and the foliage looks pretty good. That might be something I might want to try to grow. Well, what Floyd also works on is the honor roll of African violets. And I know we're not in tips and treasures yet, but I did get treasure in the mail. The new edition of the African Violet magazine came in the mail this week. And one of the articles that is in here is the AVSA honor roll. And for 2012, it says, there are no additions to the honor roll of violets. That's very interesting. So now there's more information here and it says to see the complete honor roll listings from 1960 to 1998 refer to the May-June 2000 edition of the African Violet magazine. Now if you don't have that handy since it is more than a decade old, I, I will see what I can find out this week if that's available somewhere, um, if we can get a copy or if Perhaps the office has that information. I really don't know, but I'll see what I can find out. Now, to be in the honor roll of African violets, a variety must have appeared in the best varieties list for three consecutive years. That means that it has been tried and true three years in a row and has come up on, on the best variety, variety list uh, and then, then it would be added to the honor roll. So I'll just tell you a few of the ones that are on here because I've grown a lot of these and they are phenomenal plants. Ode to Beauty, which uh, first hit the honor roll in 1997. Nessus Crinkle Blue, which is on this year's list again uh, of, of uh, best varieties. That hit the honor roll in 1998. 
Some of these, for those of you who grow plants, you're going to really recognize these names. Milky Way Trail in 1999 and Nessus Satin Rose. Pow Wow by Kent Stork and Rob Sticky Wicket by Ralph Robinson. Um, hit the honor roll in 2000. Um, Rainbow's Quiet Riot came on the honor roll in 2003. There are, and there are years, in 2006 there were no additions, and again this year in 2012 there were no additions. So that is always, the honor roll and the best varieties list, those are a great way to look for plants that already have, obviously have a good history of growing. As we've talked about before, before, different varieties grow well in different people's conditions. So something that may grow well for me may not grow well for you, but the best way to know is to try. So I hope that answers your question, John. And actually, next week, we're going to talk about a computer program that was mentioned briefly. It's called First Class, actually First Class 2. And uh, it was created by Joe Bruns. He, uh, and I was one of the beta testers for the initial ver uh, version of the program. It was a lot of fun to work with him. And I learned a great deal. It is now a program that as a grower, I would, and as a person who shows their plants as well, I would not be without it. It's wonderful. It has f uh, just a, a wealth of photographs and descriptions of plants. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can't um, talk some more about that next week. So let's, uh, I do have another question from Ellen. She's a brand new grower, my friend Ellen. And she left a comment again on the website this week and says, hi, another question. When the potting soil comes with fertilizer already in it, how long does it last? By that I mean, how long is the fertilizer active in the plant? She says, important to know so I don't fertilize again too soon. Thanks, A. That's a really good question, Ellen. And that's one of the problems with using a, a potting mix that comes with fertilizer in it. The, the bag of the commercial potting mix that I bought said that it was good for six months. So I would say that if you are repotting every six months, then you don't ever have to add more fertilizer because you would be repotting on a regular schedule with that mix that already has fertilizer in it. But if you don't repot regularly, it's almost impossible to know when that fertilizer that was in the mix initially, when is that exhausted? And that's part of the reason that most hobbyists who really grow for show don't use a mix that has fertilizer already in it. I hope that answers your question. Well, I had another question from my friend Linda, but let's move on to tips and treasures before I answer that. Um, I did want to, uh, let me pull up the magazine again because it's such a treasure when it comes. I always love to get it and I look at it and there's a lot of good articles in it this, this uh, edition. This is the September, October 2012 edition of African Violet Magazine. And the way for you to subscribe to this magazine is to become a member of the AVSA, the African Violet Society of America. On the website, if you will look over to the right on the sidebar, you will see that there is a, a link that says join the AVSA. It will, it will pop up a PDF file that you can print out and mail in and, uh, and join. And you, the, one of the great tangible benefits of membership is getting this wonderful magazine every, every few months. Uh, individual membership in the United States is $30, and in Canada it's $35, and international membership other than Canada is $40 a year. So I, so I, I highly recommend that. There is a great article this month, and it really talks a little bit about some of the things that we started to talk about last week. It's written by Mary Schaefer. It's for beginners. It's the, her for beginners column. And it says starting from scratch, which obviously I was doing. Again, starting from scratch, making sure your violet babies make it to adulthood. So she's got these great photos. She's got the leaves that she put down. And you know, obviously she had to work on this article for quite a while because she's got the, you know, the, the babies getting ready to separate it, and then once they're separated, all of this stuff. This is a great article, and it's got a lot of really good beginner information, so I highly recommend that one. And then I, there's another one in here. Um, 
Wait, it's back here. This is so cool because this it's a very international edition. This article um, is the second African Violet and other Gisnariids show in Romania. How cool is that? And there are wonderful photos of the show. It's a really great article. And it's just so cool to see our plants that we love so much all over the world. You know, African violets really are one of the world's favorite blooming house plants. And here's one about Vladimir Kalgan and his wife, Tatiana Kalgan. The, they're the couple between, behind the Russian African violets. I know that Joyce and Kent Stork have visited them. So has Paul Serrano and Ralph Robinson and his wife, Olive Ma Robinson. Again, great photos, a really interesting article about how violets began to become so popular in Russia. So I, I get the magazine. It's wonderful. So moving on here into, into more tips and treasures. I keep taking my glasses off and on, but I told you I did have a lot to read today. So my friend Linda um, says, A, maybe you should point out the different parts of a plant on an upcoming show. Even though I'm a gardener, and she is, Linda is an urban gardener, she has uh, chickens in her backyard in the city of Chicago, and uh, she has a phenomenal urban garden and grows a lot of her own produce and, and is very, very focused on that. And she's an excellent gardener. And she says, even though I'm a gardener, I get confused by the terminology sometimes. What is a crown, for example? There's so much to learn. Well. I, I, I recorded some footage for you to kind of talk about the parts um, that you would that of the plant. But the best place to learn about this is in the handbook, the AVSA handbook for growers, exhibitors, and judges. This is available on the AVSA website. And I've just pulled out the pages. And I, actually, I pulled them from my old copy of the handbook because the new one has them, but the, the copy wasn't very clear. So these are all, I mean, these are the parts, they're all numbered and you can, you can read about them. The crown, Linda, is the center of the plant. That's the crown in the center of the plant. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll see you on the other side of this footage. We're going to talk about blossoms, buds, the bloom stalk, a pedicel, a peduncle, petiole, a sucker, and seed pods. And I'm gonna demonstrate them and show them to you on an actual plant. So I'll be right back. Hi everybody, welcome to the kitchen. We're here in my kitchen. I thought I would try to show you these parts of the plant um, on an actual plant, um, as well as having you having seen them in the book, in the handbook. So. A blossom, I don't have any open blossoms right now, but let's see if I turn this. There's a bud. See it? Right there. It's a partially open blossom and there is one below it. There's some more coming up around the sides there. And uh, But a blossom or a bud is the flower that's on the plant. The bloom stalk is the whole spray of, of blossoms. It, it, it encompasses all the the rest of the parts that most of the rest of the parts. Um, so this whole stalk here with whatever blossoms it have has uh, eventually will have on it. That's the bloom stalk. It's a spray of blossoms on a stem that grows in between the leaves. Okay. A pedicel is the stem supporting an individual blossom or bud in the in the cluster. So let's see if I can turn this so you can see it. That's pretty good. All right, so from here to here, this little stem for this single blossom, and there's one right here as well, a little tiny stem, those are pedicels. A peduncle is the stem that supports the entire blossom cluster. So that is, that's this piece right here. The, let me turn it a little, get you a better view. There, you can see it pretty well there. It goes all the way down to the neck, it grows in between the leaves down there, and that is that's the peduncle. That's what holds everything up. A petiole is the stem that contain, that connects a leaf to the neck of the plant. So, right, actually you can see one right here. That stem right there that connects this leaf to the plant, that's a petiole. 
Now, thankfully, I cannot show you a sucker because there isn't one on here. But I think we've talked about suckers before, and I think I popped one off for you and, and uh, showed it to you at one other time. And I also cannot show you a seed pod because there are none on this plant. But I hope that gives you an idea in person. And of course, these are the leaves. You already know that. And uh, the roots you can't see because they're in the pot in the dirt. <laughs> but that kind of gives you an idea of how, um, of how those different parts, where they are and, and what they look like. I hope that helps. I'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm back. I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope that gave you a, a, a little better idea of the parts of the plant as I talk about them. And now it's time to take a look at what's on the stands and there's something exciting. So again, I'll be right back. Well, here we are. It's time to take a look at what's on the stands and things are looking kind of exciting here especially this winter moon. I want to show it to you. It really is, it has some blossom stalks that are popping up there. Things are looking good. Uh, you know, it's, it is in a three inch pot, which really is small for a standard, but I, I might take it, we'll see. It might go to show. Here is Rob's Antique Rose, still growing and looking good and there are some bloom stalks in there getting ready to poke up so we will be seeing them in the next week or two hopefully everything else looking good no no blossoms here on little Inca girl I'm kind of disappointed was hoping that one might pop up and but pink pussycat can you see them right in there little blossoms starting to poke up right there so cross your fingers there and I've got nothing on little Comanche girl either I'm kind of disappointed I was hoping that one might uh, might make a run for it so to speak and here we have little Creek girl which is growing quite nicely but no blossoms and here we have blueberry sprite which is trying to bloom as though its life depended upon it and it's throwing up a lot of blossoms so I am hoping that I can uh, work with it and maybe do a little more grooming obviously need to do a little more cleanup it's looking kind of dirty and dusty so uh, I will work on that next week hopefully and uh, show it to you guys let's go out to the sunroom and take a look at what's on the stands out there well, here we are back in the sunroom. I have still not had an opportunity to work on these plants from Illinois, but they are hanging in there and uh, they'll keep growing kind of in stasis almost until I really get a chance to work on them. They are very, these plants are very forgiving. So I'm tipping up the dome here and letting you take a look. Almost everything is just shooting up babies here. It's just so exciting. I love this and as you can kind of see already through the other dome things are doing just the same over here shooting stuff up and growing lots of things growing pretty soon it will be time for me to pot some of these babies on yay okay let's go take a look at our big box violet Wow, guys, this plant is growing and take a look. Do you see? It's trying to bloom already. In fact, I'm going to give it a little hand here and tease that blossom up in between the leaves. It will look better. There are some crown leaves trying to grow down there. They're kind of small. And in truth, I should probably pull that blossom stalk off, but I'm just going to let it grow and see how it does. Now, the soil still feels moist like a wrung out sponge. I'm going to take a quick look. Still what? There's water in there. It's doing fine. I'm really excited that this one is growing. I'm going to turn it a little so that it can grow. There we go. And uh, I'll be right back.
isn't it cool when the when they start to bloom it's like wow here we go um, I, that blueberry sprite it has been trying to bloom ever since i brought it home from national back in in june so i i'm excited if i can get that to have a good head of blossom i will i will definitely see what i can do about the the symmetry issues and hopefully take it to show i'm excited about winter moon um, i wasn't sure it was going to you know it's kind of small for a standard because it's new but it's doing really well so i'm crossing my fingers for that one too so um i'm four weeks out from show i think i said that last time i keep getting the weeks wrong i look at the calendar where i have them written down and and then i end up saying the wrong week once i'm sitting here in front of the camera but it's there's four weeks until uh till i go to tulsa to the missouri valley african violet council show and a convention the fall uh, event it is in tulsa so get the bail money ready anybody who's in the tulsa area you may want to keep that one in mind and one of the and always as always as i've mentioned before on the website avsa.org the avsa website you can see what the upcoming events are but also in every edition of the magazine there's always a great listing of coming events and as you can see there is an entire page here that takes us you know all through september october and the, just the very beginning of november and they're everywhere of course the ohio one that we've mentioned uh, uh missouri they have one in the gateway west gisnerian society is in september uh, Delta Gisneriad, we've mentioned that, and sometimes people get it in the magazine and forget to get it on the website, so always good to check both places. So stuff coming up there, coming up in Texas, coming up in Michigan, coming up in Iowa, in Colorado, in Minnesota, in Oregon, uh, in Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin, so Florida, New York, everywhere. There's, there are violets everywhere, so take a look. Take a look out on the website as well. Well, I think we might have a slightly shorter podcast this week. I think that's okay. I'm very hopeful in the week, um, the next, uh, well, once I get to Tulsa to have some more uh, experts, real experts, to interview and uh, have you hear what they have to say. I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to, you know, hopefully, hopefully having a few plants for show. But it's time to keep moving forward. And you know, I've been thinking about this actually all week long. Um, this time of year always seems like the new year to me. I have always been stuck somehow in that old school year calendar. And uh, so the day after Labor Day always feels like the new year. So happy new year. I hope that you've all had a wonderful week. I hope that your week to come will be great. I hope it will be filled with all the things you love good growing. See you next time.